Hi, my name is Becky Holland. Today I wanted to talk to you about two ways that you can support your student science education at home at all grade levels. This would be asking and answering questions while actually doing some science and then reinforcing science through stories. So first, let's remind ourselves why young people love science. They're naturally curious. They really want to know how things work. Kids ask why constantly. Here are some examples from actual children. Is this leaf dead? Why do leaves change color? Why are there puddles? And later, where did the puddles go? How does that kite actually fly? I encourage you as parents to capitalize on this natural wonder and continue to cultivate it with your children. As children start to understand the natural and the physical world around them, they eventually gain an appreciation for its complexity and for its beauty. You can nurture a child's curiosity by actually doing some science with them, asking them questions throughout, and encouraging their questions. Here are three simple ideas for actually doing some science at home. Idea number one, go on a nature walk. This will probably be most exciting for the youngest of students, but older kids might enjoy it as well and can help. Explore your local park or just walk around your neighborhood. Bring a basket or a bag and a notebook. Collect specimens that you find along the way. Seeds, sticks, leaves, pine cones, small insects, blossoms. But of course, just be careful of poison ivy and don't pick the flowers out of your neighbor's yards. Turn it into a hunt or a challenge with your kids. Ask your kids to find three leaves that they think came from three different trees and explain to you why they think that. Ask them to find something that needs sunlight and maybe something else that doesn't and explain how they know. When you see organisms you can't take with you, maybe some squirrels or the deer, fish, or a blooming tree, have your child draw a picture of it or describe it to you in their own words. When you get home, you can lay out all your treasures on some newspaper and help your child identify and classify organisms. Some categories that you might have for classification could be living versus non-living or animal versus plant. You can talk to your child about why organisms look the way they do during these late winter and early spring months in your region and how they might look different in other times of the year. Idea number two. Involve your children in the cooking of meals or baking of treats. This is great for children of all ages, but elementary students especially can practice using measurements and mixing ingredients. Ask them to compare the various units in the recipe. Teaspoons, tablespoons, two-thirds cup, three-fourths cup. Which is bigger? Which is smaller? How do you know? Ask them what's happening to the ingredients in the mixing bowl versus what's actually happening to the ingredients when they're in the oven or on the stove. What states of matter are visible? How do they know? They can actually see physical and chemical changes happening right in front of them. Finally, a third idea is for your older students. While we should remember that science instruction is good in and of itself, and that science education should not be approached strictly for utilitarian aims, we do know that scientific investigation can help us solve problems. There are probably several projects on your to-do list right now, things that need to be built or fixed, outdoor projects that need attention this spring. I know I have a portion of my yard that keeps flooding and another part that just won't grow grass. So give your older children the problem or the project and ask them to design a way to accomplish that project or fix the broken item. Ask them to explain it to you using the scientific method. Ask them to use the background information that they know about all of the variables involved. For example, what do you know plants need to grow? What do you know about how water moves through the soil? They're essentially going to design an experiment. Ask them why they picked the materials that they did and challenge them with budgetary considerations or other variables. If it's reasonable, you can even have them complete the project themselves. Outside of actually doing science, science can be learned through stories. The stories of people who experimented and made life-changing discoveries, the stories of chemical, geological, and biological processes, the stories of how tools and technologies are made and how they interact with our world. These stories can be especially beneficial when purely visual or an experimental experience just isn't possible for a child. 
For example, stories about the galaxy or the solar system can help paint a picture in a child's mind, even if he can't view celestial bodies with the naked eye or with a telescope. Young children can draw a picture or build a model with everyday objects about the story that they hear or that they read themselves. Reading or hearing stories about scientists allows students to see science as a human endeavor and part of the human story. There are countless science books out there for your children, and you probably have several in your home right now. But here are some particular recommendations for you. First, any book by Gail Gibbons. She uses vivid illustrations and just the right amount of factual text for early elementary students. She has books on the earth. She has books on plants, animals, astronomy, meteorology, tons of different topics for the youngest of students. The Who Was series are short chapter books with biographies of scientists and others, including Madame Curie, Albert Einstein, this is Alexander Graham Bell, George Washington Carver, Jacques Cousteau, and Galileo, and many more. These are really aimed for upper elementary students, or you could pick portions out of it to read aloud to younger students. A little bit more challenging but still accessible book that I recommend for both adults and for older children, as well as a read aloud for younger children, is The Story of Western Science by Susan Wise Bauer. These are um, 28 really accessible chapters, short vignettes of scientists from ancient times through the 20th century. This author, Diana Aston Hutchins, or Diana Hutz Aston and Sylvia Long, um, an author illustrator pair has a series of books that combine um, beautiful illustrations, poetic language, and um, some interesting facts that are great for elementary students. These are great for read alouds or they're just good for independent read or for students to just look through the pictures. Titles include things like a seed is sleepy, a nest is noisy, and just take students into even the smallest um, objects in nature to see how fascinating they can be. And then finally, for science books with amazing photographs, check out any books by Seymour Simon. The reading level is just right or even a little bit challenging for third through fifth graders. And he writes on topics in life science, earth science, natural disasters, and just captivates students with the interesting facts and his great photographs. Well, I hope these ideas give you some ideas for how to support your child science education at home. Enjoy the wonder and have fun. You can do it.